Saturday morning, 28th of June, 2020. This is the 47th session of this morning prayer. We are going to take our, uh, our worship songs from hymn number 89 and uh, hymn number 92. Let's begin with hymn number 89. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, great that exceeds our sin and our guilt yonder on Calvary's mount. Upon there where the blood of the Lamb was split. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that we pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that is greater than all our sin. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord. Grace that exists. I say na na guilt yonder on Calvary's mount. Ah, ah, Paul, there where the blood of the Lamb that was split. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God, grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Sin and despair like the sea waves cold, threaten the soul with infinite loss. Grace that is greater, yes, grace untold, points to the refuge, the mighty cross. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that we pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace. God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Dark is the stain that we can not hide. What can I bear to wash it away? Look, there is flowing a crimson tide. Whiter than snow you may be to them. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that we pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all. I sing, marvelous, infinite, matchless grace, freely bestow on all who believe, you that are longing to see his face, will you this moment his grace receive, grace, grace. God's grace, grace that is that we pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. In number 92, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace 
that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved now pray shall be that grace appear there are i first believed to many danger toys and snares i have already come this grace that brought the scepter's power and grace will lead me home yes when this heart and flesh shall fall and more life shall cease I shall possess within the devil a life of joy and peace when we've been there ten thousand years bright shining as the sun we have no less this to sing God's grace than when we first began. I want us to come before the Lord again this morning to appreciate the mercy of God, to appreciate the kindness of God, to appreciate the love of God that has brought us into a new day. Let us pray. Blessed Father, we thank you because of how you carried us through the weekdays to this weekend. We appreciate you so much. Words cannot express our gratitude. I want to speak from my heart. Blessed Father, that we appreciate you, all of us that uh, come together every morning to pray together, to sing together, to look into the perfect law of liberty together every morning on behalf of us all. Blessed Father, we appreciate you because there has not been any report, negative report. Rather, what we are getting is uh, positive reports and testimonies of your doing, of your protection, of uh, the provision of the intervention, testimony of miracles, testimony of deliverances, testimony of great favor that people have been enjoying this season. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. Glory be to you. What a wonderful weekend. Father, we're going to look forward that this weekend shall be a weekend of retreat, a weekend of uh, uh, spending time with God, a weekend of uh, reflecting on the goodness of God, a weekend of reflecting on the gesture of God, a weekend of reflecting on the mercies of God that are preserved our lives. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. If it is not God that has been on our side, we would have been consumed. We want to appreciate you. Blessed Father, we will use this weekend to reflect, to, to look inward, to look inward deeply, and also to look and to ponder on the mercies of God and on the forgiveness of God and on the deliverance of God and on the goodness of God that has been showered upon us over and above on the love of God that, that was shed abroad in our hearts, on the love that sent Jesus to the cross to take our place so we can take his place, that sent him to the cross to die for us so that we can live. My God and my Father, we want to thank you for Jesus. We want to thank you for the gift of life want to thank you for the gift of forgiveness of sins. want to thank you for the gifts of uh, 
deliverance from sin. I want to thank you for the gift of, of uh, salvation, gift of justification, gift of sanctification, and gift of the Holy Spirit. We also want to thank you for feeding us physically through uh, this week and uh, having oversight over our lives, supervising our lives. We appreciate you so much. Thank you, our God. Glory be to you. We are trusting, Lord, as we uh, go into this morning devotion. You will speak to us. We will hear. You will rebuke us. You will correct us. You will point out things for us that we have not done well. And we are ready to amend. We are not going to take chances. We are not going to abuse the privilege. We are not going to underutilize the opportunity that uh, you are presenting before us this morning. We bless you. Thank you, our Father. Glory be to you. I pray that uh, this will not become formality. I pray that nobody, great Father, will take this every morning, devotion, every morning, prayer, every morning, singing together, every morning, listening to the word of God, that we shouldn't take it for, for granted. Neither should we allow formalism to, to creep in. We thank you, Spirit of the living God. Take control absolutely. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The theme of this morning devotion is responding to God's great gesture to man. Now, in John chapter 3, John chapter 3, let us uh, see verse 14 through to verse 21. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest he is this should be reproved. Verse 21. For he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Jesus Christ, uh, in this uh, uh, chapter we have read, uh, uh, talks about uh, Moses lifting up the serpent in the wilderness, that it is in the same way the Son of Man uh, will be lifted up, and that whosoever that we believe in this Son of Man will be saved. That is eventually what happened after some years. Now that was fulfilled at Calvary. Jesus Christ died on the cross and was buried on the third day and he resurrected. And so that is what we call God's great gesture to mankind, to humanity, to the world. God's offer of forgiveness, God's offer of redemption, God uh, taking the place of man to ransom man and deliver man from sin. Now, look at the way that uh, Apostle Paul presented this uh, gesture of God to humanity, to sinful man. In Romans chapter 5, reading verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, 
wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. I hope make it not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. That is the capture. Jesus died for the ungodly, not for the godly. Verse 7. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That is amazing thing about God's love. That is an amazing thing about this gesture, that this gesture was extended to men who didn't deserve it. So, for God so loved the world, sinful world, wicked world, world that hates God, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever from these haters of God, from this sinful and ungodly world that uh, receives him, will uh, have his sins forgiven. Now, Paul put it this way, that when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. And then he made an argument. For a righteous man, you can scarcely find a person that will say, let me die for him. However, you may find a good man. Somebody will say, okay, let me die. But in our own case, is that God commended his love. God showed his blood, the love. God, God demonstrated his love that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, the just for the unjust, so that he can bring us near to God, so that he can bring us near to God. Now look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and let us read verse uh, 21, for he had made him to be seen for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That is uh, the whole thing. That is what makes uh, this offer of God, this offer of salvation, this offer of forgiveness for our sins, this offer for deliverance. That is what makes it unique in the sense that uh, God did not uh, 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 sent Jesus to die for those who deserved to be died for. He died for the undeserved, for you and for me. And God expects that you should respond and I should respond positively. We should be grateful to God for this, his gesture of love. Now in First Peter chapter 3 verse 20, uh, verse, uh, uh, okay, verse uh, 18, please. For Christ also had once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. So that is uh, what we are calling uh, the great gesture of God to man. Now, from the time that Adam had that great fall, God had uh, taken a number of steps to recover and to restore man. But unfortunately, all of these steps that God took, man had uh, never responded appropriately. Now, the moment the fall occurred, God's, God's first gesture. God's first step was to come to the garden and to ask Adam, where are you? And Adam began to make excuses, began to tell stories. And God said, have you eaten what I ask you not to eat? Instead of answering yes, and then I'm pleading for mercy because God must have come to show mercy. Now, Adam was agreeing. What have you done? 
instead of accepting what he has done, who told you you were naked? Chapter 3 of Genesis, verse 11. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? The man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I eat. That was not what God asked him. He shifted the blame. And God turned to the woman, What have you done? The woman shifted the blame. And as a result of that, as a result of blame shifting, of missing this gesture, coming the, in the cool of the evening to see what has happened, was a gesture, an opportunity to amend, opportunity to accept that he has a, he has a father, he has a, done evil, but this opportunity was rejected. This opportunity was not utilized. And so man missed the opportunity. And God sent him out. Now, nevertheless, in verse 21, unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. However, God went ahead and then, and some animals had to lose their life so that man could be clothed. That is another gesture. And then a man was sent out. Now, another time that God uh, raised a man, a man to to show, to be an instrument of uh, deliverance. So the people of Israel was uh, in Exodus chapter 2. And then and God raised Moses. And Moses was uh, God's instrument of deliverance. And when Moses came, and the people began to, he noticed uh, where an Egyptian and Israelites, they were, where they were uh, fighting and quarreling, and he came and separated them. And uh, in the course of that separation, he killed uh, an Egyptian later. Some day later, that case came up. And then he saw an, a, an Israeli fighting with an Israeli. And then he came to, to settle them. And uh, now one of them said, have you come to kill me the way you killed an Egyptian? Now let's read it in verse uh, uh, 13 of uh, Exodus chapter 2. When he went out of the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. He said unto them that did the wrong, to him that did the wrong, rather, wherefore smitest thou your fellow? He said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me, and thou killest the Egyptians? Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. So you can see that delayed the deliverance of the people for another 40 years. So that is how it has always been. Now even uh, when God came to Cain and he saw that Cain was drifting and drifting to a terrible evil and then and offered him opportunity to repent, opportunity to change his mind, opportunity to retrace his way back, opportunity to, to, to have a rethink. He refused and then eventually committed the sin. And so God made efforts severally during the days of the prophets to rescue his people, to reach out to his people, which his people rebuffed. Let me show you an example of where God Gave the people opportunity, and then and the people will not would not listen. In Jeremiah chapter six and verse sixteen, thus says the Lord: Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths where is the good way, and walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. What was the response of these people? But they said, We will not walk therein. They outrightly rejected his offer. Chapter 7 of uh, Jeremiah 13 to 16. And now because you have done all these works, says the Lord, and, speak, uh, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but you had not. I called you, but you answered not. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein you trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh, 
Now you can see it. Opportunity was given to the people, but the people did not take advantage of it. And therefore, God decided that since you refuse to respond to my, my gesture, now you are going to see my other side. And that is exactly what is awaiting men and women that have refused to take advantage of God's love that sent Jesus to die on the cross. Verse 25, since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, unto this day I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. You yet they hearken not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Now, even in the days of the prophet Jeremiah, before Nebuchadnezzar and the king of Assyria, all of that came to evacuate the people, God spoke and spoke, and the people were not here. So it has been like that. Chapter 11 of Jeremiah, verse 7. Jeremiah 11 and verse 7. For I earnestly protested unto your fathers, in the day that I brought them up out of the land of Egypt, even unto this day, rising early and protesting, saying, Obey my voice, verse 8. Yet they obey not, nor incline their ear, but walked everyone in the, in the imagination of their evil heart. Therefore, I will bring upon them all the works, works of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they did them not. So, it is not today, God did not begin to offer uh, his uh, uh, mercy to people from Jesus Christ. It has been there from the time of the fall. If you read Jeremiah 25 and chapter 26 and chapter 29, and uh, you will see the offer. God's giving the, God giving the people opportunity and opportunity to change their minds so that they can be heard, so that they can be delivered, so that the evil coming can could be averted. But the people would not listen until the judgment came. So what we call here God's gesture, simply in other words, is God's gifts, his love, his opportunity given to you to make amend your way. God's chance, God's offer of redemption, God's offer of opportunity to repent. God's offer of opportunity to receive forgiveness of sin. That is what we call God's gesture. In the days of Isaiah, Isaiah was uh, given gesture, such gesture by the Lord. God showed this gesture to Isaiah, this opportunity to correct his life, this opportunity to to remove the little, little things found in his life. And thank God, Isaiah's response was, uh, was uh, proper. And that response launched Isaiah into the next level of his life, into a new height. Now in Isaiah chapter 6, it was a gesture. God could have uh, kept quiet and Isaiah continued with his own cleanness of the lips. But God didn't do so. He gave him an opportunity, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his strength filled the temple. God unveiled himself. God unveiled his glory. God unveiled his uh, uh, greatness, his uh, throne for him to behold. Above his two the seraphims, each one had six wings with twin. He covered his face and with twin. He covered his feet with when he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with his, the smoke. That was an opportunity. That was a gesture of the Lord to make him see who he was. To make him to see the settings of heaven so that he could realize that uh, he has a step out. He has moved out from the, the path that is supposed to be. And quickly Isaiah saw what was going on. And look at his response. Then I, verse 5. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am undone. Because opportunity to see the glory of God, the holiness of God, was shown to him. So his response was a correct response. 
and that now moved him from the level to a, a higher level. So, what are you doing with opportunities that God is bringing you away? This gesture of uh, every morning we wake up and then and we hear God's word and we pray together. What are you making out of this God's gesture? Because it is a gesture, but you know that the death of Jesus on the cross is a, a mother of all gesture. Now, I am asking you again, what are you making out of uh, the God's gesture to bring you into such a movement where you find truth of God being dished out? What are you making out of it? Are you taking advantage of it? Are you responding uh, properly to this gesture? Or are you taking for granted? Adam took for granted the opportunity and was excusing himself and you knew, knew what happened. And the children of Israel took for granted opportunity that uh, God gave them when Moses was raised up. And they had a delay of uh, about uh, 40 years before they got their deliverance. And then, and then Cain took for granted the warning from God. Sin is lying at the door and Cain would not listen. And then and brought the trouble he brought upon himself. And so the same thing with the people in the days of Jeremiah. They took they did not take advantage, they did not make a proper use, they did not respond properly to God's gesture, bring, bringing his servant, bringing prophets, and speaking and warning them. And eventually they ended up in captivity. So, but we see Isaiah responding properly. God will want you to respond like Isaiah. Isaiah was a great man of God. He didn't argue, he didn't argue, he didn't say, but I'm a prophet. What he did was uh, correctly. And then and the response he got further launched him into a higher ministry. Verse 6 of Isaiah chapter 6. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a light coat. The seraphim responded to Isaiah's humble response. Humble uh, response to God's gesture. Humble attention to God's uh, goodness that was shown unto him. We have another person whose response is worthy of emulation, whom we can learn from on our way uh, to respond to God's goodness, whether the goodness of Jesus dying on the cross or any other goodness, any other gesture that God is uh, showing to us. And that is David. That is David. David had gone into sin. David had made that great mistake and, uh, and had covered up and was dying, dying quietly, dying privately, dying inwardly, and was getting rotten by the day. And then God extended gesture to him, his mercy to him, by raising prophet Nathan, an unknown prophet. Nathan went to confront David, and then and in 2 Samuel chapter 12, 1 to 14, and showed him, made some illustration, and David reacted. He said, you are the man, and then told him what he did. And David humbly accepted. Let us see that David, David could have said, call some of the people to get this man out of this place, and then I'm continuing his cover up, and then I would have died, I would have perished. And would have not fulfilled his ministry. He would have uh, died un un unacceptable. He would have ended up a man not desired. But look at uh, David's response to the, the, the challenge. Now in verse uh, 7, Nathan said to David, you are the man. You are the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. I gave thee your master's house, your master's wives, into thy bosom, gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. If you had been too, if they had been too little, I would have moreover given unto thee such and such things. Why hast thou, wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord? After he said all of those things, and then, and look at David's uh, uh, response, verse 13, and David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord, 
And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also has put away your sin. Thou shalt not die. But then contrast it with the way Saul responded. In chapter 15 of 1 Samuel, Saul was agreeing and agreeing, and he ended up losing the Spirit of God, ended up dying, his sinner. And uh, he must, uh, he, he, if he died as a sinner, then he would go where sinners are, will always go. And so, David, to further, to show his repentance, penned down Psalm 51. In acknowledging this is evil publicly, he penned it down. And it was made public that David had sinned. And, but he acknowledged it. Now, verse 3 of Psalm 51. I, have, I acknowledge my transgression. I accepted it. I take responsibility. And my sin is ever before me. He acknowledged it and pleaded for mercy. And mercy was given to him. Now, apart from that, other goodness of God, other gestures of God shown to David, he responded greatly to them. Psalm 68 and verse 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily loaded us with benefits. Even the God of our salvation, he was grateful because of the daily benefits that God was loading upon him. For every good that God has done to David, he so much appreciated it, he so much responded to it. In Psalm 103, and let's read verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his uh, benefits. He began to reel out the benefits, including who forgiveth all your iniquity, who healeth all your diseases. He was so grateful about that. In fact, he penned Psalm 41 in, in acknowledgement and in res reciprocating to the deliverance God gave him. Psalm chapter 40. Psalm chapter 40. Let us see David's response. I waited patiently. Verse 1. For the Lord and the inclined unto me, I had my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of a miracle, I set my feet upon a rock and established my going. He had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. He was so excited about uh, the deliverance and about the mercy of God. Can you please go with me to another occasion that uh, uh, David uh, showed uh, his, uh, his uh, high appreciation, high grade appreciation. Appreciation is level by level, high grade appreciation. And God demands that we should be people that highly appreciate God for his goodness, for his gesture, for his love, for his care to us. In Psalm 116 and verse 12, What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord. Now in the presence of all his people. Now, why did he say I will pay my vow? That is in response to God's goodness. He responded to God's gesture. Now, the woman Hannah also penned down even her appreciation. So, we can respond to God's gesture. First, by receiving what he has offered. Receiving the, what he has given to us with thanksgiving, with appreciative heart. Highly regarding what God has given. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth him should not perish but have everlasting life. So God demands that every one of us should highly appreciate the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on the cross. The sacrifice that brought redemption to you and me. And then also appreciate highly that God is ever ready to forgive us and to cleanse us from every unrighteousness. And we should appreciate that each time you falter, each time you stray, each time you move out of the way, each time you stumble, you'll find God also extending olive leaf to you. you find God extending his mercy and forgiveness. Should we take the mercy of God for granted? Should we take the grace of God for granted? 
Can I please show you uh, people where Paul, where Paul was talking about people taking the grace of God for granted and what happened to people that took the people who took the, the grace of God and the mercy of God for granted even what they went through. Now in Hebrew 10 verse 28, he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. The mercy there was that there has to be witnesses. Now verse 29, of how much sorrow punishment supposed shall he be thought worthy who had trodden underfoot the Son of God and accounted the blood of the covenant, the blood of redemption, the blood that saved you when which you were sanctified, saved and sanctified and, and, and holy thing. And then, and I don't despise unto the spirit of grace. When person does that, then the next thing that is waiting for the person is verse 30. We know him that has said, vengeance belong unto me. I will recompense, say the Lord God, and the Lord shall judge his people. Verse 31. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Anybody that, that despises the grace of God, that takes the gesture of God, the love of God that was shed abroad, so that we can be forgiven for granted, exposes himself to God's vengeance, to the fearful hand of God, to the punishment of God, to the judgment of God. Now, in chapter 6 of uh, Hebrews, he tells us that, that there is no forgiveness of sin, no repentance, no forgiveness of sin for anybody who, waiting for anybody who deliberately, that will uh, we threw away the, the, the mercy of God after he has been saved, after he has been, been recovered. Now look at uh, Hebrew chapter 6 and um, verse, um, verse uh, uh, 4. If for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tested of the holy gift, uh, heavenly gift, and we are made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tested the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. That is it. You are asking me, Pastor, is, is it that there is a sin I will for, commit and God will not forgive me? No, that's not what I'm talking about. Now, the the yeah, there is an extent somebody would have done evil and then even after God will forgive you, will have difficulty in forgiving yourself or you have difficulty in, in even going to God to ask for forgiveness. But as far as God is concerned, he's ever willing to forgive you your sins. So, and, uh, and uh, it follows that um, the man saw rejected divine gesture and regretted his uh, his action he has uh, he has tried and god has uh, sent somewhere the prophet of god to say but uh, what mean is that well, i'm hearing some something is going wrong and uh, he was uh, arguing he rejected it he found it you can find it in first Samuel chapter 15 and 1 to 26 and then in chapter 16 verse 1 he was rejected and verse 14 the spirit of god departed from him now that wouldn't have happened. And then you know that uh, his death, when he died, the, the announcement that David gave it was how has the mighty fallen? And how has he died as if he was never anointed? That was because he rejected God's gesture, all the entreaties, all the woes, all the approaches, all the, the pleadings of God. Now listen to me. Before any person is given up, before any person perishes, he must have uh, rejected the wooing of God. He must have resisted the pleadings of God. He must have resisted the, the beggings of God. Every day God is begging the world, begging the backslider to return, begging the secret sinner to leave the secret sin, making every effort to recover a man. That is why when eventually the door, when eventually the man dies, who have refused the mercy of God, he will not receive mercy. That is because he has rejected all the pleadings, all the beggings of God, and then and has shut the door against himself. So 
Apostle Paul was a, a man that was very, very and highly appreciative to God for the extension of his gesture, of his love, of his mercy. Now in us of Apostle, Paul on his way en route Damascus, on his way to Antioch rather. Then on getting to Damascus, he was flagged, flashed down. He came down and tumbled. And then I had an experience of salvation. God delivered him. You know the story of what happened. He remained ever grateful for that. Now look at how he expressed it in his writing to Timothy. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, 12 and 10. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who had enabled me, for he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. You can see he was gracious. He was grateful. He was appreciative. He further expressed his appreciation even and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and made a commitment to live for God. That is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11 to verse 14 or verse 15. You see it there. So, and uh, in all through his writings, Apostle Paul writing, you will see him appreciating this goodness of God that delivered him, who was a chief of sinners. He called himself chief of sinners, an injurious man, but God had mercy upon him. So I want to ask you, how, what is your degree of appreciation of God's mercy, of God's forgiveness of your sins, of God's deliverance? How do you see the little, little, what we call little, little things here and there, mercies of God that are shown to you? How far are you appreciating the mercies of God? The writer of Lamentation says it is of the Lord mercy that we are not consumed. And David in Psalm 124 said, let Israel say, let his people say, if it is not the Lord who has been on our side, the enemies would have swallowed us up. That is appreciation. And in Psalm 107, and then he began to say in a number of places, oh, that man will praise God for his goodness and for his, uh, his uh, wonderful goodness and all that. So, Let's see that in Psalm 107, Psalm 107, and uh, let's just read verse 8. Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. He said it repeatedly because he himself appreciated what God did. If you read Psalm, you will see a man that has on him called uh, appreciation, a man that you cannot match in appreciating God's goodness. And guess it? David enjoyed the goodness of God, the mercies of God, because of the kind of heart, because of the kind of mind that he was carrying. He even spoke about singing, I'll sing of the mercies of God in Psalm, one, in Psalm 89. Composing songs, composing songs of, of uh, uh, which to show, to demonstrate his appreciation. Psalm 89 verse 1, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. That was what he, he, he said. Therefore, God's forgiveness, God's cleansing from sin, and God's salvation, they are freely offered and can be received. Though free, but not cheap. It costs the life of Christ. Don't take the don't take the fact that uh, the offer is free to think that it is uh, it is cheap. It costs the life of Christ. Therefore, we can receive God's mercy even this morning. The backslider can repair, can pray himself out of backsliding. The person that is uh, slowing down, it is like. Uh, is losing his first love for God, can recover it. The person that is uh, going down and his heart is full of confusion, now is raising a lot of questions about God because of some situations that have refused to abet, because of health problems, because of a marital issue, because of delay in marriage, because of no job, because of lack, 
and so, so on and so forth. And now the spirit of the person is growing cold. Such a person can be recovered. Now we're going to pray that this prayer for yourself, pray for those who are outright sinners and pray for backsliders that every person will respond to the gesture of God. Pray that every person, nobody should continue to delay until it becomes too late. Thank the Lord for the truth that he so much loved you and gave his life for you. He did not spare his son. And Paul said, God who did not spare his son, only son, we, what, will he not, what will he spare? What is he going to keep back from, from you? So let us pray, pray. Everlasting Father, I want to thank you, God Almighty. You are so good. You are so kind. Darling Jesus, I worship you. You are so kind. You are so good, Edundoloma ni plakrisopena. You are so kind, darling Jesus. I worship you. You are so good, and so eternal Father. I want to thank you because you are so good. You are so kind. You are so loving. You are so merciful. Thank you because of uh, the love that shed led to the shedding of the blood of Jesus for me. For me, he died. He took my place so that I can take his place. He died so I can live. Lord in glory, there is no love, such love. Jesus Christ said it. There is no love. He said it clear that a man can have for any person. There is no love that a man can have for his friends that can be compared with the love that Jesus had. And then and because of this love, he died on the cross. This is clear, very, very clear. Greater love had no man than this, Jesus said in John 15, 13, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Yet, uh, ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I commanded you. He laid down his life for us, and not only for his friends, but for those who are his enemies. Therefore, great father, I pray. And this is the judgment. This is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. I therefore pray, Lord, in glory that every backslider, every private sinner, every person that is uh, doing some hidden things, Lord, in glory, that this morning they should rethink of their activities. They should rethink of that kind of life. And then I will not continue crucifying Jesus afresh. Crucifying Jesus afresh. They will not continue, great father, disregarding the mercy of God. Spurring the love of God. My father and my God. I pray you, O oh God in heaven, that every person this morning, the big, the small, the old, the young, the pastor, the parishioners, all of us, blessed father, we rethink of our lives, uh, rethink of our, our commitment, and look into our relationship with God and address what's supposed to be addressed, and then I respond properly to the love of God that was shed abroad for us. Thank you, my Father. What will be our excuse? And who are we going to blame if eventually we, west, we get wasted? If eventually we get lost in eternity, who are we going to blame? God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. And it is free. And it is free. Forgiveness is free. Cleansing is free. Repentance is free. Sanctification is free. My father and my God, he gave us free. Why should we not take advantage? My father, who are we going to blame if eventually we get lost? Oh Lord, I pray that every man that is praying with me this morning, my Father and my God, we come to Calvary and take the cleansing from Calvary. Thank you, Father, for answer. In Jesus' name, amen. There is uh, an issue that, uh, is, uh, that, is, that should give concern and should be of a, a, a big concern to any person who is uh, a genuine washman. And that is the, the rate 
of which immorality and fornication and adultery is going on in the church today among church leaders among church workers among the youth among church members among the pastors this is damning this is alarming this is frightening the word of god say let this not be mentioned among you we're going to pray against the demon and spirit of immorality that has so much entered into the assembly today and many people are falling victims let us pray father this morning we come in the name of jesus against the spirit of immorality fornication and adultery and every other immoral sexual immorality and every other form of immorality blessed father that has entered into the church entered into the the, the altar and entered into the place of workers among the youths among the choir members among the ushers blessed father among pastors and leaders of the church blessed father this is frightening this is frightening lord i ask the spirit of the lord please come and save the church come and sanctify the church again in the name of jesus i ask the holy spirit the spirit of purity the spirit of cleansing that the spirit of deliverance come again into the church and cleanse us and deliver the people deliver our young men and young women deliver the leadership of the church deliver people in the worker, deliver every person that has been a victim. Thank you, Father, for answer. In the name of Jesus, those that have become addicted, those that are hooked into porn and into all of those devilish things, great Father, I request for deliverance for all such. In Jesus' name, amen. Another frightening thing, and I hope that it has not gotten to your own house. Another thing that is frightening today is that there are fightings, hatred, and offenses, and quarrel, quarrelings in the church among the brethren. Love of the brethren has died. There is no peace in many of the places. It is petition upon petition. People cannot forgive one another again. People cannot excuse one another again. People cannot forbear one another again. It is he do me this, he do me that. The church is full of uh, people fighting one another. The church is full of people that are aggressors, aggressive, reacting to one another in a very offensive way. We're going to pray that God Almighty will sanitize the church. We sanitize the church. We sanitize the church. Let us pray. Father, we come. Offenses are filled everywhere. Fighting, hatred, gossip, murmuring, quarrelings in the church. Pastor with pastor. Pastor wife with pastor wife. Brothers with brothers. Sisters with sisters. Offenses here and there. People can no longer excuse one another. People can no longer forbear one another. People can no longer forgive one another. There is no more long suffering. There is no more accommodation. My Father and my God, it is like every person is on the neck of one another. Great Father, and Satan is laughing. They call themselves watchmen. They call themselves leaders. They call themselves this. And then he kept us busy fighting one another. And then, and he goes ahead, stealing the soul and doing terrible havoc. My Father and my God, this morning, I lift up my voice to call on God for deliverance. Let God deliver the people. Thank you, Father. Restore peace again in the church, among the brotherhood. Let brotherly love start flowing again. In the name of Jesus, amen. There is no peace in many homes. That is another, another problem, another issue of great concern. There is no peace in many homes homes, many marriages, especially those who are getting married in the recent times. No more peace in the homes. Husband and wife 
fighting one another, quarreling with one another. This is uh, so rampant, so rampant, broken homes, broken homes. Where are we heading to with this kind of pen? Where are we heading to? The things that we that we are not there, even not, not rampant in the place where God raised us up from, in the place where we were delivered from. How come about that? That thing is now becoming our place has become a place where it is domiciling. We are going to pray this morning against whatsoever that is responsible for this crisis in the home crisis in the marriages is it because of the foundation they laid at the beginning is it because of the people not understanding what marriage is all about is it because the people are not in christ let us pray that almighty father will come to correct this terrible canker worm eating in the church father this morning we come before you we present all the families of the watchman, especially those of them that are in trouble, husband and wife, my father and my God. They are not agreeing. They must, any discussion must end up in fighting and in quarreling. The husband does not accept that is wrong. The woman does not accept. There is a accusation and counter accusation. My father and my God. And the house has become house of commotion. What's supposed to be honorable as our father in the law have always said has become horrible. What's supposed to be heaven has become a miniature hell. My father, I pray for all such families in the watchman, including those that are praying with us. If there is any family that is having such experience, my God, the spirit that has injected the confusion into such family. I request that the Lord, in the name of Jesus, he be expelled out of such homes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, there is another serious point we want to pray. Evil is ravaging the society so much today. And uh, the rate with which the society has been ravaged, the speed with which sin is flying, the speed with which evil is spreading, the speed with which error is spreading, the speed with which the, the worshippers of the devils are carrying out their evil is uh, so amazing, so amazing that we need God Almighty to give us grace and give us peace and give us the sense of urgency to arrest these evils that are spreading everywhere and even wanting to even 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 entering into our own assembly. Isaiah 30 verse 16. But you said, No, for we will flee upon horses. Therefore shall you flee, and we will ride upon the swift. Therefore shall they, they that pursue you be swift. Now, they that are advancing evil, advancing sin, advancing horrible, horrible things into the church, are not, they are not resting. They are on duty 247. They are committed. They, they were told, as we were told, of the angels of darkness that and their human angels that they are on assignment by the devil they are not resting on their oars they are not they are not taking chances they are committed to fulfilling and finishing the world we're going to pray that the same zeal the same zest the same sense of urgency satan knew that his time is short and then and is walking around the clock. But the church does not know that we have short time. We want to ask God to wake us up in the church so that we can also counter the devil with the same much force with force and fire with fire. Eludundum oteni prasali ikrado wajeli intuna makapalas mate. My father and my God. I want to thank you because you are equal to the task. Blessed Father, I come in the name of Jesus. I pray for awakening, great awakening. 
to the danger. Blessed Father, let the people be awakened. Let it not be the punk only. Punk of the lips tended to penury. My Father and my God, I pray that you wake up. Wake us up. Every person, every one of us from A to Z that you have been commissioned and called and given this urgent message, urgent assignment of bringing back Jacob of the threefold end time project. Blessed Father, in our very eyes, O oh Lord, we see evil ravaging the society. We see our families being overtaken. We see places being overtaken. My Father and my God, and we find people who are folding our hands everlasting Father, doing little or nothing. I want to ask eternal Father that the Lord of glory will wake us up from the leadership, every one of us, to the lead, that we will come to in tune, my Father, with what is happening. Blessed Father, so that we can throw away, my Father, levity and the lightness and then a little mindedness, great father, because the, the situation requires, my father, men that are grave. The situation, the business requires urgency. The king's business demands that we be urgent. Therefore, blessed father, I ask that the spirit of urgency that will help us to match fire for fire, great father, like we have been told, carnival for carnival, and this and that, my father, it has been a very long time, and we are waiting Oh, great father, that now it is a time that carnival should match carnival. And then all of the ten should match the ten. Blessed father, I pray you, the Lord of glory. Now, oh God, that uh, we have recommenced, Lord in glory. I pray that the spirit of recommencing will possess all of us so that nobody will rest. Now, so that the 17, 17 point agenda of the almighty God will soon, my father, begin to manifest everywhere. Thank you, Father, for answer. In the name of Jesus, amen. We need prosperity in all our all areas of our lives. To be able to sponsor the end time project, we need uh, uh, the, uh, our economy to, to, to move, even in this time that the economy of the world is in a very bad shape. God has to do something so that our economy will improve. God has to make a difference for us to make difference. Yes, we're going to pray. And then uh, the last point, before we take the prayer point, we're also going to pray that the, the Lord is spirit. And he said, those who worship him, worship him in truth and in spirit. And that he will call me and he will seek for me and find me when you seek for me with all your heart want to pray for seeking God with all our heart. And then we also pray that the sevenfold, seven spirit of God will uh, operate in our lives today. Father, thank you very much because you know that uh, prosperity is necessary for the kingdom to spread abroad. My Father and my God, you know that there are so many projects we have as individuals, that we need God's financial intervention. We also know that as a people, as a church, we have many, many projects here and there, great father, that are calling, that our finances should move from the level it is now to a higher level. My father and my God, therefore, I ask the Lord of glory, it was God who brought the people of Israel into a worthy land. And it is the Lord who said, give us a promise of uh, causing us to ride in high places. And uh, through prosperity, my city shall spread abroad. Therefore, Lord, the prosperity of the righteous is your concern, is your pleasure. Therefore, Lord, we present our businesses and things we do, the efforts we are making, we ask the spirit of the living God to make them to prosper. In the name of Jesus, we request, Lord, these days are days of shallow Christianity. These are days of emptiness. These are days of a little mindedness. These are days of pursuing shadows. These are days of losing qualities. These are days of formalism and fanfare. Great Father, I come this morning, O oh God, 
These are days of masquerade. These are days, blessed Father, of, uh, of uh, pursuing shadows and uh, looking for fame and this and that. Those things that do not count in eternity. I want to ask the Lord of glory that uh, you will flush out this from the lives of your people because with this eternal Father, this vision, my Father, will continue to be delayed even the vision you've given unto us. Therefore, Lord, I am asking, as you look through your assembly, O oh God, take away things, my Father, that have hindered us and move us forward. I request for the sevenfold Spirit of God to rest upon us so that we can accomplish for God. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Finally, let us pray for this prayer request we have here. And uh, if you have not put your prayer request, please write your prayer request so that the church can pray for you. So that we can pray with you and pray for you. I want the church to pray for two families in my village that are visited with the spirit of madness. I want the church also to pray that God should send a Bible to my village. Then the second prayer request from some other person is, I want the church to pray for me, very serious one. These two prayer requests or three prayer requests are very serious. I and my mother, we are diagnosed to have breast cancer. We have been going for chemotherapy and I have been booked for surgery. Now the people that are concerned, they should let their pastor no, so that if they are living within the vicinity where I can see them, we can attend to them, we can attend to them. Otherwise, we can make contact so that our pastors that are close to them could attend unto them directly in prayers. So we want to bring this prayer, the case of a, a family where Two families where spirit of madness has taken over is also a serious case. Some people also should make contact with their pastor so that we can equally also reach our pastors in those villages to get to those people. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. I want to bless you. The Bible is clear. Some mad people. Amen. Now we take our hymn and we're going to take. Uh, uh, two stanzas in number 88. Taking two stanzas. Yes, I spend in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified. No, he not, it was for me, he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my bed in so from liberty at Calvary. By God's word, alas, my sin I land. Then I tremble at the law. I spawn till my guilty soul implore return to Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my bed in so and liberty at Calvary. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Good morning. I have a blessed weekend. God bless you.